Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Amabelodontids are an extinct family of proboscideans that were native to Africa, Eurasia, and North America. Renowned for their bizarre appearance, with greatly elongated lower jaws tipped with chisel-like tusks, these animals have been nicknamed the Shovel Tuskers for obvious reasons. Generally modest in size by proboscidean standards, being smaller than both African and Asian elephants, the group appears in the fossil record almost simultaneously across their range during the Middle Miocene about 17 million years ago. Due to this, their place of origin is difficult to determine, but the Amabelodontids probably evolved in Africa during the early Miocene before spreading into Eurasia and North America. Older studies tended to place these animals as a subfamily within Gomphotheridae, but phylogenetic studies carried out in the 2010s have demonstrated that the group is distinct enough to warrant its own family. Despite this, Amabelodontids do appear to be close relatives of Gomphotheres, and like them, sit near the base of the Elephantida clade. It was also traditionally assumed that the distinctive lower jaws of the family were highly specialised for scooping up soft aquatic plants, with the animals thought to be inhabitants of marshland ecosystems. More recent studies have disproven this, however, with it instead being argued that Amabelodontids used their lower jaws and tusks as a cutting surface. The proboscidean would have seized branches or twigs with their trunks, rubbing them against their lower tusks in order to break the foodstuffs down into more manageable pieces. In addition, despite the vast majority of paleo art depicting these animals with short and flap-like trunks, there is in truth no anatomical evidence to support this interpretation, with amabelodontids in life probably possessing elongated trunks similar to those of living elephants. One of the oldest members of the group was a genus Archaeobelodon, which was native to Europe and Egypt during the early Miocene. First appearing in the fossil record roughly 17 million years ago, this animal was among the most basal of Ambelodontids. The tusks in the upper jaw curved forwards, with the tips projecting slightly downward, while the molars were flatter than those of Mastodons, being superficially similar to those of living elephants. As is typical for the family, the tips of the lower tusks were rectangular and formed a cutting surface useful for slicing through vegetation. In life, Archaeobelodon inhabited warm, humid forests, likely in matriarchal family groups, and led a mostly browsing lifestyle. The genus was smaller than modern Asian elephants, with adult males weighing up to 3.5 tons, while the females averaged just over 2 tons. Another early form, the genus Eurybelodon, was endemic to North America during the early to middle Miocene. While the type specimen, a partial upper tusk, was first discovered in Oregon during the 1960s, the animal was only recognised as a distinct genus in 2016 when the fossil was reanalyzed. Additional molar teeth found at the site possessed low crowned peaks, suggestive of a browsing ecological niche. The middle Miocene Chinese genus Aphanobelodon, also described in 2016, was unusual in that it was among the only proboscideans to lack upper tusks. Of all members of this family, however, the most famous genus by far is Platybelodon, an animal that often makes it onto the lists of the most disturbing extinct animals. Although I don't agree with this placement, I can see how the strange appearance of this animal could give people a feeling of the uncanny, especially when compared to familiar short-jawed modern elephants. In life, the upper tusks were rather short and pointed, while the lower tusks functioned like a scythe for breaking branches and stripping bark from trees. Platybelodon was modestly sized, standing just 2.2 metres or 7 feet 2 inches at the shoulder and weighed approximately 2.5 tonnes. Four species are known, with the animal inhabiting a wide range stretching across Africa, Asia and the Caucasus region. This genus thrived for a period of 5 million years during the mid to late Miocene, probably becoming extinct due to climatic changes and the expansion of open grasslands at the end of the period. A close relative, Conobelodon, was native to Europe, China and North America at approximately the same time. In the latter region, the type genus Amabelodon filled a similar niche, being a flexible browser inhabiting what is now the Great Plains region and the American South between 9 and 5 million years ago. During the Miocene, much of the continent was covered in open savanna woodlands, quite similar to those present in modern East Africa today. Amabelodon clearly thrived here, being one of the smallest of North America's extinct proboscideans, being comparable to the Gomphothere cuvieronius in terms of size. Two species are known, 
with the larger being the plains-dwelling and Asian elephant-sized Amabelodon fricae. The smaller species, A. floridanus, was, as the name suggests, native to Florida, and inhabited the warmer, more humid swamp forests present there. Like its close relatives, Amabelodon was an adaptable browsing herbivore, feeding on laurels, oaks, and cypress trees. The lower tusks may also have been used for digging into relatively hard substrates in search of roots and tubers. Once again, the genus most likely became extinct as a result of the aridifying climatic trends that took hold towards the end of the Miocene. One of the youngest Amabelodontids was the genus Protanancus, being native to Kenya, Bulgaria, Pakistan and Thailand during the late Miocene and possibly the early Pliocene. This animal was among the largest members of the family, being comparable to Asian elephants in size and weighing up to four tons. Wear patterns on the lower tusks indicate a diet that consisted of softer and less coarse plant matter than the related Platybelodon. Protonanchus probably mostly fed on leaves, with the youngest specimens recovered from Kenya and Pakistan. By the Miocene-Pliocene transition, Amabelodontids were on the verge of extinction. Climatic cooling in the Pliocene most likely led to the group dying out, in addition to competition from more derived proboscideans of the clade Elephantoidea. Interestingly, the rhino subfamily Acerotherianae also died out during the Pliocene, probably due to a reduction in forested environments at the time. Sadly, the Amabelodontids faded into extinction. This group was highly diverse and successful during the Miocene, utilising their bizarre cranial anatomy to fill a unique browsing niche. Up to 11 distinct genera were present across Africa, Eurasia and North America during the period, with only one potentially surviving into the Pliocene. Once considered to be sluggish, swamp-dwelling animals, modern research has recast these proboscideans as specialised savanna and forest dwellers. After their extinction, modern elephants and their relatives moved into their niches, although none have developed adaptations so striking or unusual as the Amabelodontids. Thanks for watching everyone. I'd like to thank my latest patrons, Steve S and Bile, for their support. And if any viewers would like to sign up to my Patreon for bonuses, please feel free to do so. The next video upload will be a two-for-one deal, consisting of a pair of shorter videos examining more Alter Earth content, in addition to the enormous extinct ray-finned fish, Lead Zichthys. See you again soon. Cheerio.